Hello there, it's Claire Leroy here from The Little Design Corner and welcome back to my channel where I create videos for designers, decorators and home renovators who are looking to create beautiful homes to live in and businesses that they love to work in as well. And what we're gonna be doing on today's video is actually jumping back into SketchUp, which I do a little bit around here on my channel, which is a piece of software that is pretty much the only software I've ever used as an interior designer to help my clients achieve their design and renovation project goals. So I create all of my 3D drawings in SketchUp, all of my plans, elevations, joinery designs, lighting and electrical plans if I do those or mock those up for clients and all of those sorts of things. Lots of people are very surprised to find out that I don't use CAD at all in my practice and that is because I can do everything that I need to do inside SketchUp with the software called Layout that comes with SketchUp Pro. So what I wanted to do is just walk you through basically my workflow inside SketchUp and Layout and just show you what I use it for, give you some examples of some different projects that I've worked on, show you some of the sort of drawing sets and stuff like that that I've put together over the years and just sort of give you a sneak peek into the design uh, system and process that I use with my own design clients. So if that's that sounds of interest then please stick around that's what we're going to be doing today now if you are new around here I am sharing videos about SketchUp and also about design in general running a design business productivity a whole bunch of things like that so if that sounds of interest to you and you are new please do hit the subscribe button and also that notification bell so that you can be notified when my next videos go live in the meantime let's jump into this week's video where I'm going to be talking to you about SketchUp and layout and my own design work workflow inside that program. I'll catch you over there in a second. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna show you is really the first step that I use when I'm working with clients and also when I'm working on my own projects, which is what I'm doing at the moment and is what I'm gonna show you here. And that is basically to do some space planning. So as you can see here with these little um, plans here, what I generally do is to um, import an image or a CAD file or whatever I have in terms of a floor plan and I'm not going to scroll in because it's got the address of my new house on it but um, basically I bring in the image and for this particular um, project that I'm working on I brought in an image from the floor plan that I had access to via when we bought the house and you'll often find that when you've bought your house if you've done that recently that the estate agents have put together a floor plan and you can use that. Now these are notoriously not to scale. So if you do have a CAD file that perhaps an architect or a, or a uh, drafts person has drawn up for you, they're gonna be a lot more accurate and we learn how to um, do lots of different ways of bringing in a floor plan in my SketchUp course. So I teach you how to draw up a, a floor plan yourself from scratch. So that might work well if you've just got a small house or a small extension that you wanna work on or something like that. That can be a bit fiddly if you're not used to doing that. We also learn how to do it with the file that you bring in from you know example from when you've bought and we also learn how to import a CAD file into your uh, into SketchUp and to use that as well so we learn all different ways of doing it um, so whatever you can get your hands on so then what I do generally is if I'm helping a client or if I'm doing this for myself to play around with some different floor plan ideas, what I'm gonna just do is actually turn that plan off. So you can see I've got that on a layer and or a tag and I'm just turning that on and off. You can see the floor plan image itself is disappearing. So I'm just gonna turn that off just because it's got the address of my house on it. And then if I scroll in um, to a couple of these, you'll see that what I've been doing here is I've basically drawn some geometry over the top of the floor plan and I'm just playing around with different ideas for different um, ways of laying out the um, the new house so basically uh, if we look uh, over here so we've got this is sort of the version that I'm looking at to just move in this is sort of the current floor plan and then I have played around with a bit of stuff to do with the site plan and where the pool might go and then I've done a plan where I've put on a little extension and I am not a structural designer. So this is an important thing to point out. I'm just an interior designer. I can't do structural work. So these will all have to be drawn up by a drafts person or an architect in due course. But I personally find SketchUp really helpful because I can play around with all different floor plan ideas myself 
and just get on top of what I want to do with a project or what I want to do with my own house without paying an architect or a draftsperson to do all those initial ideas for me. Um, so you'll save a lot of money that way by just sort of really nutting out what you want to do with your space yourself. And then that's something to go to an architect or a draftsperson with and then to you know start the process perhaps a little bit more informed than you might be if you were just starting from scratch with that process. So that's what I personally really like about it. Um, and and I can also put in my own furniture scaled to the same size that uh, all my furniture is scaled to and I can just see how it's going to work in a space as well and this is exactly the same process that I would work through with a client as well. So once I've done that space planning process for a client, I don't do this step for myself obviously, I then put it into a document using Layout which is the um, software that comes with SketchUp Pro, so the paid version of SketchUp. And I'll just open up something and we can have a look at that. Okay, so this is a an example document that I've just exported out of the client project. I've just removed their names and their address and everything just for their own privacy. So this is the first stage of a large project that I was working on with these clients. So basically what I had done is I put together some concept images of just sort of the look and feel of what I was proposing for their project. And you can use layout to do this. So this is really helpful. Make sure you always use your disclaimers on any drawings that you do if you are working Working with clients you never want people to be building off your drawings especially if you are not a structural designer so really make that clear so that you're covered and then I basically just present the options for the different floor plan ideas that I've had for them so that they can then start to think about that and obviously go and get that drawn up by someone who is um, qualified to do so so I um, I help them sort of rejig their floor plan in this particular example and I have made notes about all the different um, different ideas that I've had for them and this is the second story here as well and just I've put in some skylight suggestions of where to put skylights some um, other different bits and pieces as well so this is the first thing that I would have presented in a large project where I am um, working with a client on a very large project so this um, is the first thing for them to think about so I don't want to spend any more time drawing up in 3d so this is all just been done quickly in 2d well it didn't take it wasn't super quick but it's um, all just 2d so if I were to rotate here this is an example still the same thing you'll see that this is still a flat drawing I haven't spent any time drawing and um, pulling up any walls or anything at this point because especially when people are paying me a lot of times people will go well I don't really like um, I don't know this walk-in pantry or whatever it might be and I'd rather this be the laundry and this be the bathroom or whatever it might be and so you don't want to have spent all the time pulling up all the stuff into 3D at that point because you will find that it's much harder to change and it'll just spend more time doing it so this is all a 2D process at this stage that is the first step in my workflow with clients. So this is now a different project, but the next stage in the process is once they have agreed to the floor plan, then what I do is spend some time drawing that up in 3D for them. So I pull up the walls, I create more detail around what the joinery will look like. I'll just change the perspective on that. Um, and I draw in, you know, more furniture and all different things and just create the full model in 3D. I, you know, drew up the sort of fence detail on this house for them for their front veranda, a whole bunch of different things. So that is the next step in the process. And once I've done that, obviously I can't present it to my clients like this, although you can actually uh, walk through live for a client through your model. There's an app on your iPad that's really helpful or you can show them this file and obviously like walk them through. But if you want to be able to send them something or print off something, then you're going to want to be able to present that in a way that is accessible for them. You can't send them a SketchUp file because they won't have SketchUp. So what we do again is to jump back into layout and I'll show you an example of what I present to my clients when I have done this next stage of the process. Okay, so again, I've just removed the name of the clients for the privacy, but here is that exact project we were just looking at. Again, I've got some sort of inspiration images of some of the things that I am suggesting inside the design that I am putting together for them. And then basically I start to go into a bit more detail. So we start with the sort of floor plan layout and I've got some specific notes here. Um, I had worked off a CAD file for this particular project. The clients were already working with an architect, but they 
wanted some sort of tweaks and some suggestions on joinery and a few things like that. So I did make some changes to what the architect had suggested for them. And that's always a bit of a delicate balancing act. You don't want to be annoying the architect or doing things that sort of step over your boundary. But this architect was very happy they had sort of got a favour from this particular architect. So they were happy for me to be making some suggested changes. And so here are some notes that I had made for the architect so that they could get those drawings redrawn. Because remember, I am not qualified to do that sort of stuff for them. I am simply just giving them some ideas based on concept and that sort of stuff. Um, and so these are some things that I suggested that they think about talking about with their architect to get changed on the CAD plans. And then you can see that I present a whole bunch of different perspective views of the drawings that I have completed inside SketchUp. So I just put those together inside layout and give them a whole bunch of different views of each room, add some notes about um, some of the things that I'm suggesting in the design and go through each of the rooms. I have lightly furnished it. These aren't particularly, um, there's not a lot of styling and that sort of stuff, but it gives them a bit of a sense of where furniture might be placed in each of the rooms. Uh, it's got some of the wet rooms, the laundry and that sort of thing. And this is the next step that I work through. So I haven't done any detailed joinery yet. I've just drawn the joinery quickly. I haven't detailed that up for them yet, just in case they still do want some changes to the joinery based on what they're seeing inside these um, drawings. So this gives them a much better sense of what their space is going to look like, but perhaps they, you know, don't like the location of the fridge or whatever it might be. So I haven't spent too much time mocking the joinery up properly yet. That is a very time consuming process and that would come next in my workflow. So this is the next step of what I would present to my clients. And then once the clients are happy with those designs that I've presented to them in that other document and we've sort of walked through this in detail we've probably had a meeting a couple of meetings I've probably talked to them a little bit about materials at this point I probably would have collected up some samples from suppliers to show them for the different tiles and options that I'm suggesting in the different um, areas and they probably are getting close to pretty much being happy with the overall design and we're moving into uh, documenting all of this so that they can then work with their joiner and their builder and that sort of thing to either work with the architect to make changes properly or have joinery designs that they can then go to their joiner with so the joiner can make their own shop drawings and all of that sort of thing. So that would be the next process. And if I scroll out here, you can see that what I teach in my SketchUp course is a process of drawing joinery outside of my models. Um, I find this a lot easier than drawing joinery inside my models. I um, then create components, which we talk about how to do so that anything that I create outside the model updates automatically within the model itself. And as you can see here, I now have all of the joinery for this particular project modeled out in great detail in this particular space in the SketchUp um, workspace. And then what I do is once I've done all of that, I will prepare the detailed drawings for the client based on those detailed joinery drawings. So again, you'll see a lot of the same stuff still in here. In this particular project, I then had created a very light sort of um, lighting plan for them. And I also put in a few suggestions for skylights because uh, the house was quite dark. So that was something to uh, just suggest to them so that they can take that to their architect to discuss further or to their builder to discuss further. Again, highlighting the fact that it's really important to have disclaimers on your drawings that these are conceptual drawings, these are not construction drawings. So nothing that I'm creating is construction drawings. This is all just conceptual for them to work with builders and licensed trades, obviously. Then you'll see we've got a lot of those same um, things that we, so it's really a building document, I guess. So we've got the same sorts of stuff that we have already um, worked through. And then I'm building on this document by adding in the joinery drawings. So this is where I go into a lot of detail about the, um, the detail of the joinery designs, the measurements of it, how it works, how the cupboards work, what's inside the cupboards and all of that sort of thing, how the tiling works, the different elevations, this detail here on the island bench return that I had created. And you can see I go into a lot of detail. This is very, very time consuming. So you do not wanna go into this process until you have sign off from your clients about what they exactly want to do. Um, and so as you can see, it, um, it is quite a time consuming process, but we've got every bit of joinery 
that is in the house, including, you know, vanities in the bathroom, joinery for the bedroom, and the next bit I will come to in a moment. So that is pretty much the next step of the process. And then the final step, if I am doing this for a client, is to actually, let me just make that work a bit better okay let's just drop that back down inside okay is to actually create lighting and electrical plans which you can also do in layout now again obviously they need to work with their licensed electrician to actually do all of this lighting work but often clients would like my input into what they think um, I should where they think they should put their lights and their powerpoints and all of that sort of thing so I definitely am happy to do that for people again just making sure that I cover myself to say that they need to work with their licensed um, their licensed professional to be able to install all of this but this is something that sometimes they find quite helpful to have so I have created these keys inside layout and I give this template actually as part of my intermediate course where we learn how to use layout so SketchUp and layout together is actually such a powerful combination because as you can see you can really do all sorts of interior design work without having to leave the program itself. So everything that we have looked at here, I have not used CAD, I have not used any other program, Photoshop, any of that sort of thing. And I've been able to put in a full document of plans and designs and things that a client can then go and use with their licensed professionals. So it's a very, very powerful piece of software. Clients love it because obviously it's also an extremely powerful communication document. A lot of people still do this sort of work by hand. A lot of people still flick between different programs. I have never used CAD. I've never used hand drawings. I'm a hopeless, hopeless drawer actually. So everything that I have ever done with design and with work with clients has always been using SketchUp and Layout and I find it really a powerful tool to be able to communicate my ideas. At the end of the day, that's what we're trying to do. We have some ideas in our head. So, if, you know, for this particular uh, project, I had ideas in my head. I have been able to use the power of SketchUp to draw those ideas and then I have been able to use the power of Layout combined with SketchUp to be able to communicate clearly the measurements and the details around those drawings. So, I that's basically it. That would be the final set of documents that I would do. Sometimes I'll obviously go on and also do furniture and um, and those sorts of things as well. I also have fixtures and fittings templates, but I do that in Excel and I have other processes that I use. So I'm just sharing with you the actual process inside SketchUp and Layout today. So these do have accompanying documents and processes that I use to um, work through with clients. And actually I do have a template of a fixtures and fittings template that I do work with clients and use with clients myself. You can grab that on my website at thelittledesigncorner.com if that's of interest. Um, but otherwise, this is the main document that I will be providing to clients when I'm working with them. So hopefully that little sneak peek into my workflow with clients is helpful. Um, um, I hope that it's given you a few ideas for how you might be able to work with your own clients. And as I said, like if I am doing my own project, which I am at the moment with our new place, this is also the process that I would work through for my own projects as well. So then I can take these to my joiner, to my builder, and we can work together on getting this created in new designs for my own projects as well. So this is a very powerful piece of software. It can be used by design professionals. It can be used by design enthusiasts. It can be used by home renovators whatever sort of person you are I'm sure you'll get a lot of value out of using SketchUp and it's also a lot of fun to use as well I have sat basically all weekend playing around with the designs for my own house here and so it really can be very addictive and a lot of fun to sort of really see your place come to life I also really like it because we're not going to do this renovation all at once. We are going to stage that. So you can do sort of a master plan for your house and just work out which bits you're going to do now, which bits you're going to do later, and just know that it's all going to make sense once it all comes together. So I hope you have found that helpful. If you have, please do give this a thumbs up as it would really help me to uh, get my channel sort of seen by more people. So thank you very much in advance for doing that. And if you are new around here, please do consider subscribing. I have a lot of videos about interior design, about sketch up about running your design business all sorts of things so if that sounds of interest please do subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when my new uh, videos come live that's it for today i hope you have a really great week and i will see you in the next video bye for now